Six ways for better FEA. No matter how much work you do in FEA, there is always room for more improvement. FEA stands for Finite Element Analysis. It might seem that we easily coax the computer into working and producing magic results, but what you actually see is years of hard-learned lessons. Masters of FEA tradecraft hoard many little tricks and nuggets of wisdom to deliver better FEA. These tricks yield better ways to detect human errors and ensure model reliability, or methods to deliver faster results. Today, I share six nuggets of wisdom for better FEA in the maritime industry. Number one, do not model everything as solid elements. Most of ship structures can actually be modeled with FEA plate elements. Uh, these are 2D surface elements that require far less computational effort than a 3D solid. Unlike simple 2D shell elements, plate elements also recognize rotational degrees of freedom for the nodes the Rx and Ry degrees of freedom. This allows you to model plate bending, which is a key element for the ship's structure. Compare our first order plate element to our first order solid element, a brick element, hexahedral. The plate element has 20 degrees of freedom total, whereas the brick element has 24 degrees of freedom total. That doesn't sound like a big difference, but watch how quickly it multiplies. Take a simple model. A simple 5,000 element model. If you look at that 4 degree of freedom difference times 5,000 elements, now what you're looking at there is actually an extra 20,000 degrees of freedom in your matrix. People that know the details of FEA math, yes, I'm doing the simplified version and skipping out the overlapping. But, but the point here is that that's a lot of extra computational effort. And the penalties even get worse when you consider things like second order elements or larger model sizes. Remember, 5,000 cells is actually a pretty small model. So you can see that there are major computational benefits to modeling things as plate elements whenever possible. But there is an exception. For mesh sizing of your plate elements, the element size should not become smaller than the plate thickness that you're meshing. When those stresses change so rapidly, the plane strain assumptions of a plate element no longer apply. So that is what is going to drive you to using a 3D solid element in those regions. But for the other 99% of the structure, save the computational workload and use plate elements. Number two, verify your own mesh sizes. Many FEA vendors publish recommendations for mesh sizing. Do not trust these as the ultimate authority of mesh sizes they only serve as a starting point. It's important to remember that your software vendor doesn't have your model to test and they are not the one ultimately responsible for the quality of those engineering results. As the engineer, you alone are entrusted to guarantee the accuracy of the model. So test your mesh side settings, perform mesh independent studies, confirm the accuracy of your model. Number three, stiffeners are plate elements. Conventional wisdom might lead you to model all of your stiffeners as line elements, that is, linear beams. Save yourself some time and just model everything as a plate element. Most FEA models are built from a starting geometry, which often includes those stiffeners, and it requires minimal time to take that stiffener surface and specify a thickness for the whole thing. However, if you go the other route, you have to first remove the geometry of the stiffener element, you have to model each stiffener as a separate line element attached to the plate, except now you have to enter many separate properties to define each stiffener, not just material properties, but section properties, and they change depending on the stiffener and the plate that it's connected to. That adds up to multiple opportunities for typos and mistakes. Save yourself the time and the risk, just use plate elements whenever you can. One caveat to this, the convenience of plate elements also requires the wisdom to apply the mesh settings correctly. Those mesh sizes now need to capture the stress variation across the web of the stiffener. We're assuming that you don't have a whole lot of torsion and so variation across the flange should be fairly minimal. Most guides are going to recommend a minimum of three elements across the stiffener web. 
So take that newfound wisdom and compare the two pictures on your screen right now. Looking at the two, you can notice that the top picture has been modeled with plate elements for its stiffener because we have fine discretization across the web and on the flanges. Whereas if you look at the bottom stiffener, you notice that you have just one element discretized across the entire flange and the entire web. That's a classic sign there that they're using line elements to model the stiffeners. Numerically, that's perfectly fine. But when you have to do that for large structures with complicated assemblies and lots of properties, that's a lot of chances for you to make a mistake. Save yourself the risk, go with plate elements. Number four, model your welds as a continuous mesh. Temptation beckons us to model those welded joints as a bonded connection. I mean, the software developers advertise this as a magic solution. Simply place the parts together and let the software automatically create connections. Don't do it. Automatic bonded connections will hurt you on three fronts. First, ship structures are too dense in the connections for the software to reliably detect those connections automatically. Every time I have tried this in the past, the software created about 80% of the connections correctly and 20% are ridiculous connections stretching all the way across the room that completely misrepresent the stiffness of the structure. And then you have to go in and manually connect, correct every single one of those. Imagine testing a crane foundation by assuming that the top of the crane automatically links straight to the deck plate, ignoring any of the pedestal in the middle. The automatic connections will often create those types of erroneous links. The second reason to avoid bonded connections is the increase in computational time. For many types of analysis, these connecting links are going to get rechecked and reformed at every single time step, requiring an update to the stiffness matrix and an update to the connection properties. That accumulates mountains of unneeded computing time. Finally, bonded connections will remove your control over the quality of the model mesh at these critical joints. The FEA software typically searches for the closest nodes when it's trying to form the connections. This can almost result in a random connection going left or right. That leads to all sorts of ill-formed elements that create unrealistic transfers of stress. You need to remember that these welded connections are often the initiation sites for failure in the real structure. So you want high quality meshes at these critical welded joints. The answer to all of this is merged meshes. They provide the need for simple connections between parts. For a merged mesh, the software typically replaces the nodes from one part and then substitutes in the nodes from the other part along the shared line. Adjust the mesh a little bit to make sure you still have good quality elements and you have two sets of nodes now become one set and both parts get regenerated as a single continuous mesh. This eliminates all of that added computing time and restores your control over the mesh settings. Number five. Check your mode shapes. Ship structures begin their FEA life as a collection of unconnected parts. The engineer then needs to connect all of those parts together into a single assembly. Unless they miss a part. This happens regularly since maritime FEA models may incorporate dozens to hundreds of different parts. So save yourself the grief of rerunning a model, hunting through all those parts trying to find what you missed. Employ this trick to quickly identify any runaway parts. Before you start your main analysis, do a side analysis to check your mode shapes. Analyze your model to identify the first five natural frequencies. Don't worry about the details of the frequencies or about pretension. We're not actually interested in the harmonics. We want the mode shapes. Plot the mode shapes on a displacement plot, and suddenly those uncoupled parts are going to light up as bright red patches of displacement. Unconnected parts move freely, calling attention to their free movement. And now you know which parts you missed. This one trick can easily prevent a whole day of lost time hunting for a part. Number six, recognize stress singularities. Stress singularities are a quirk of FEA. We see them more often in maritime structures due to the heavy use of plate elements. When you see small points of peak stresses, be sure to check for stress singularities. Do not mistake them for stress concentrations. Mistaken points can result in unnecessary plate thickness, extra weight, and extra costs to the client. 
I actually have a video about recognizing stress singularities that you can check out. Once identified, what do you do about them? Well, there are several ways to handle a stress singularity. If it's not a critical spot, simply ignore the singularity. But for more critical areas, you're going to need to replace the geometry in that section with something that does not generate a singularity. Look at the table on your screen below for various suggestions of geometry replacements. Time to wrap it all up. These little tips might seem simple, but the best secrets often are. An experienced engineer doesn't have some magic button to deliver great FEA. Experience demonstrates itself as wisdom learned from the engineer mastering dozens of small problems with every FEA model. And as a result, every FEA model is better than the last one. That is the true value of these modeling tips. It's the wisdom of experience. Thanks very much. I'm Nick, the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.